been two weeks after Giants GM Dave Gettleman said the team didn't sign Odell Beckham to trade him. The Giants signed Odell Beckham and traded him. Uh, we didn't sign Odell to trade him. A lot of times, GM, scouts, coaches suffer from what I call good old-fashioned arrogance. Gettleman's exceptionally bad at lying to the press. One of the things that, that we really focus on is instincts. For the New York Giants, it's very simple. It's just a total rebuild built around a 38-year-old quarterback, of which there is no track record of that ever working. Ever. Sometimes it takes a move like this to highlight one's inefficiency. You haven't retooled. You stripped this team down to where now you're really working behind the eight ball. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know. I, I, I could do a better job GMing this team than Gettleman right now. If you are wondering who the sucker is in the room, it's you. It's the Giants right now. They're the sucker in the room that other teams are exploiting. So with all that being said, let the games begin. Oh, that's nice. That's great. Yeah, you're really delighted with yourself, aren't you? Bastard. Welcome in. It's Wednesday. Today was supposed to be a free agency special with TJ Lang. Hi, TJ. Hello, Mike. Okay, talk to you in a few minutes. All right. I'm very upset. And I look, I've been here for 15 years. For 15 years, I've talked about your teams, right? I entertain you. I cater to you. Do the things you want me to do. So for 50, I've given you 15 years. I'm going to take about eight minutes and talk about my team. And at the end of it, I'm still going to deliver for you because I have a local angle to this OBJ crime that has taken place. So I'd like to just get this off my chest. I'd like to just try to vent a little. TJ, you can break in when you like, but if you try to rationalize or explain or apologize for what the Giants have done, I don't want to hear it. No. You may as well turn your mic off. Get it all out. I'm going to. I'm going to empty the bag. So here's the deal. Um, like, I I have no desire to go to prison. And, in fact, I I – Really shouldn't even say this, but when this happened, all I wanted to do is take a pipe to Dave Gettleman's face. Now, I don't really mean that because, like I said, I'm not into violence and I don't want to go to jail. But Dave Gettleman is Satan. This guy's an absolute buffoon. And what the Giants just did was launch themselves into space. How many times have I said this on this show? Either trade Odell or sign him, but you can't do both. What, what does this blowhard do? He does both. Giants already paid him a $20 million roster bonus. Now they're sitting on $16 million in dead effing money. Are you kidding me? What is wrong with you? Other than the fact you're an idiot. So the Giants go out. You have the opportunity last year. Hey, I got an idea. Let's rebuild, right? This team blows. I got the number two pick in the draft. This thing's a dumpster fire. What do they do? They take a running back. Now they got a 38-year-old quarterback making $23 million a year, and you just took a 26-year-old wide receiver who you just paid, a mercurial talent, a dude who's put up better numbers than Jerry Rice in his first five years, better numbers than Randy Moss. Check it. And you've given him away. And I'm fairly certain John Dorsey is a heterosexual male, right? He's married with three kids. Well, guess what? Dave Gettleman's got the honor of being the first guy to see John Dorsey climax because he ran to take the deal you gave him. He ran. He needed wet wipes and new undies. Oh. The number 17 pick, a fringe <laughs> round selection, and TJ's laughing and it makes me laugh. I want to cry. We got the last pick in the third round. We didn't even get the Browns' better pick. And then the coup de grace is I get a welfare version of Landon Collins. But not just any welfare version. I get breezy. Mm. I get one of my least favorite players in history, Jabril Peppers. Jabril Peppers. Or, or as they're saying today in New York, Peppers. Peppers. <laughs> Sausage and Peppers. That's what I get. For the best receiver I've ever seen. Yeah, sick deal, bro. Now, here's the best part. The Giants are sitting on dead money. If you wanted to get rid of Odell, you get rid of him last year, like I said. And look, they were one and six. Did they get rid of Landon Collins? Nope. Gettleman has let Collins get away for nothing. Traded you guys, Snacks Harrison, for, for a pair of underwear and a flat tire. Got rid of Vernon. Now he gets rid of OBJ. 
and we get nothing back. And all the while, that mouth-breathing rat, Eli, is still there making $23 million. This deal's a disgrace. We're sitting there with a Hall of Fame running back and nothing else. And by the time the Giants are remotely competitive, Saquon Barkley is going to be one or both of the following things. He'll either be dead or he'll be off his rookie deal, which means you got to pay a non-premium position premium money. And we know how that works out. Can't believe it. The Giants have turned into the laughing stock of this, of this league. And I'm done. I'm out. I was almost out when they didn't take Darnold last year. You guys knew what I wanted. And I know this is delightful for you. That's fantastic. I don't have a football team. And for all the people who say I'm Lions free, I'm Lions free. Good, I'm Giants free. So now we need to have a conversation of what you drove to your insanity. Because here's mine. My team is run by a patsy, a shameless con man patsy, a yes man. Mara hired a yes man. Oh, you'll keep Eli? Okay, you're hired. And now this guy, who's almost as out of date as Charlie Casserly or the brisket in TJ's refrigerator, is tasked with trying to rebuild this team in today's NFL, and his idea of rebuilding is hog mollies. Hog mollies? You brain-dead idiot. You kept Eric Flowers around. You signed Patrick Omame and cut him midseason. TJ called Omame the worst guard he's ever seen. Don't deny it. I you, did. You paid Nate Solder, and he turned into a friggin' pumpkin. My team is run by Matt Millen. I have Matt Millen. I've already lived this on ice. I already went through Mike Milbury. It drove me out of being an Islander fan. I can't do this. OBJ's a pain in the ass. He might have something wrong with him. Who knows? He's also the best receiver I've ever seen. He's 26, and he's yours. And if you you could have done this last year. They paid him a $20 million roster bonus, and now they got $16 million of dead money. We still don't have a quarterback. We can't partake in free agency. Everything the Giants have done has been ill-timed. Everything. If you knew this thing was going sideways and you didn't want Landon Collins as a part of your future, why didn't you trade him at the deadline? You could have got a second or a third round pick. Now by waiting, we don't even get a compensatory pick this year. It'll be 2020. You traded snacks. Bob Quinn. Bob Quinn came out in a dominatrix outfit. That's what he did to you, Dave. He took his paddle right to your ass. A fifth round pick for snacks? Holy mercy. And all Dave Gettleman has done is exactly what he's done in Carolina, is get rid of all the good players. Why do you think this guy got unceremoniously launched out of a cannon? It's, it's gross. And if you, look, for, for the Browns, congratulations. Browns are Super Bowl team. We, we are the laughing stock of the league. We are now what the Lions used to be. I've said it to you. I've said it to you the last two years. You're a better organization than we are right now. But this, this is a new low. This takes me out of my ability to watch the Giants at all, to have a football team. So what we're going to get into today, outside of Pepper and TJ about possible retirement, outside of trying to get TJ a new job, outside of talking about free agency and the deals that happened and what happened around the league, outside of Le'Veon Bell, outside of me having a number of unbelievably unsavory things to say about Dave Gettleman, John Mara, Eli Manning, and the New York football giants at large. We are going to attempt to have some fun, but the topic we're going to start with is simple. You guys, A, explain how the Lions didn't get involved on that, but B, if you've called in ever before and said you're Lions free, tell me the moment that forced your hand, that made that decision for you. Because my moment was last night. Not trading Odell. It's trading him and getting nothing back. It's this offseason, the moves that are made. My God, the Giants could have saved $17 million by cutting Eli. They didn't do it. Now free agency's over. It's over. Come hey, on. Shut up, Dad. There's no one to spend the money on. No one. Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. We'll properly welcome TJ to the show momentarily. We will get into this lion's free thing, but yes, I'm angry. But I'm not a, a chimpanzee with symbols. I'm not going to go crazy yelling and screaming. I can't. I don't have it in me anymore. They've taken it. Dave Gettleman has taken it out of me. Congratulations, Dave Gettleman gave another general manager a boner because of his own stupidity. Awesome. Yeah, I'm thrilled. It's an embarrassment. 
My team is a total embarrassment. So if you want to just take pot shots, go ahead. The Lions are better than Giants. I know it. But the topic at hand is, you've seen my moment where I'm Giants free. It's here. I'm out. So what made you leave the Lions? Because I know you guys have called up and told me you're, you're Lions free. What was the moment that did it? Let's share in our misery. And then we'll see if TJ even wants to bother touching this topic with a 10-foot pole. 248-539-9797.